Welcome to this session of the Family Wellbeing Series presented by the Local School Boards and Public Health Unit. My name is Malika Kong and I'm a public health nurse from the Middlesex London Health Unit School Health Team. Hi, and my name is Sarah Petrie. I am a public health nurse from Southwestern Public Health on the Healthy School Team. We are here today to discuss your teenager's transition to high school. To get started, we wanted to recognize the fact that we are meeting virtually, but still live on and work in unceded territories of the Chippewas of the Thames First Nation, Oneida Nation of the Thames, Munsin Delaware Nation, Anishinaabek, Budasani, Ojibwe Chippewa, Attawandarak, and Mississauga Nations, affected by Treaty Number no. 2, Treaty Number no. 3, Treaty Number no. 6, and Treaty Number no. 29. If you have not had an opportunity to engage in the history of these groups, we encourage you to do so. The history and ongoing discrimination against Canada's Indigenous, Métis, and Inuit people has a lasting impact on their individual lives and our societal collective. This impact is ongoing. It impacts our Indigenous neighbours, the Indigenous children in our schools, our co-workers, our friends, and for some of us, our families. Please take a moment to reflect on the impacts of discrimination and intergenerational trauma these groups have had to endure. Whether you personally experience these impacts, or you know someone who does, or you can simply empathize with them. Through a culture of acceptance, understanding, respect, and open communication, we can come together to forge a positive future for everyone who calls this land home. Thank you. Your teenager's transition to high school is an exciting and nerve-wracking time for both of you. We hope to make this transition easier for you both so that your teenager's high school experience can be fun, safe, and memorable. In this presentation, we will talk about a variety of topics which should help you better engage with your teenager, help your teenager cha handle challenges, and show you how to keep your teenager safe at this exciting time. The objectives of this presentation are to teach you about teenage brain development and how the differences in teenage brain impact their activities, reactions, and relationships. Give you tips on how to communicate with your teenager as they find their independence and take on new risks. Impress the importance of social media safety and how to keep your teenager safe online. Provide practical tips on grade nine transition process. Explain how you can help your teenager develop skills to build their resiliency. Help you understand when your teenager needs your help and how you can tell. And finally, where you can find support if you and your teenager needs it. We are assuming it has been a while since you were in high school. So let's start with an activity where we can take a moment to reflect on the questions on the screen. When you think of the second part, take a moment to write down your concerns on a piece of paper. You may find that this presentation can help you find the answers to your concerns, or you may find them in the resource page that we've sent out as part of this presentation. Now that you've reflected on your high school experience and your teenage years, let's take a look and where your teenager's brain development is at. The teenage brain is under construction and is still growing and developing. We will watch a video which further describes how the teenage brain is developing and explain why teens act and respond the way they do. It's not easy being a teenager. There's the angst, the emotions, the raging hormones. And although hormones do play a big role in puberty, the brain is going through a lot of changes too. Neuroscientists are learning that some of the most puzzling teenage behavior may actually have some real benefits. Legally, you're considered an adult when you turn 18. But from the neuroscience perspective, your brain is really still developing. And the current literature suggests that it's about around age 25 or so is when the brain finishes the period of adolescence. This is Dr. Adriana Galvin, and she runs the Developmental Neuroscience Lab at UCLA. The brain develops from the back to the front, so the prefrontal cortex is the last region to fully develop. 
The prefrontal cortex is the part of the brain you need to make good decisions, to think about the future, think about consequences. You can kind of think of it like the Spock of the brain. Logical, calm, and collected. And then deeper in the brain, there are these emotional systems like the limbic system that are more interested in immediate gratification. They're sort of like Captain Kirk, a risk taker and a bit emotional. During the teenage years, the limbic system develops really quickly and the prefrontal cortex is trying to catch up. Eventually, as individuals become adults, the prefrontal cortex will increasingly have more influence over behavior than the impulsive part of the brain. So without a fully developed prefrontal cortex, you can kind of see why teens might be more impulsive or just worry less about future consequences. Another brain region that's really active during adolescence is this thing called the striatum. And it's a key part of the brain's reward system. Let's say you find 20 bucks on the street or someone gives you a cookie. The striatum goes off and it releases dopamine into the brain. Adriana's lab discovered that the teenage brain is super sensitive to different rewards like sugar and money. Way, way more than in the brains of adults and children. And all this activity in the brain's reward center, it may actually serve a purpose. We asked teenagers to come to the lab and we scanned their brains while they performed a learning task. They were shown a picture of a butterfly and two flowers. And they were asked to guess which flower the butterfly would land on. After each guess, they were given feedback. When the teens got it right, their striatum would get really, really active. They would learn over time that the butterfly preferred one flower over the other. And everybody learned this task. But what we found is that the adolescents learned it more quickly than adults and with greater accuracy. So having this reward center that's hyper-responsive to feedback actually helps teenagers learn from their environment. But this same region of the brain is also connected to risk-taking. Data from Adriana's lab suggests that teens with a more reactive striatum are more likely to engage in risky behavior and to enjoy it. Rather than ask how you keep your teenager from taking risks, because we know the brain is really oriented towards risk during this time, it's better to ask how do I provide opportunities for healthy risks. Like trying out for the school play even if you've never acted before, or asking someone out on a date. Those are real risks to a teenager, but they're not the kind of risks that parents typically worry about. It makes sense from an evolutionary perspective that there's a time in life when teenagers want to become more independent, seek out new opportunities. In the animal world, this would translate into looking for new food resources or foraging behavior. And in teenagers, it often manifests as risk-taking behavior and simply moving away from the family unit. Teenagers are gonna make mistakes, but they've got this brain that's encouraging them to learn and explore and push boundaries. So adolescence is a really special time, and I think we don't appreciate enough their energy and their ability to lead and to motivate and how excitable they find life in a way that we maybe, <laughs> maybe we don't later in life. Our brains keep changing throughout our lives, and researchers at UC Berkeley are learning that if you give people a little bit of power, it can have a big effect on the brain. Learn more by watching our video here, and be sure to subscribe for more Figure One. This video acts as a good reminder that for years to come, teenagers' brains are still developing until the age of 25, and sometimes beyond. So, this could present some challenges when parenting teenagers. There are several changes that typically occur in the teenage years. Here are some examples of what your teen may be experiencing. Physical and emotional changes, including weight, height, acne, sex characteristics, and emotional up and downs. Changes in their self-confidence as they form their own identity. Hormonal changes, such as mood changes and interest in romantic partners, and changes in their risk behaviors. They may be more impressionable, experiment, and have feelings of invincibility. Just as adolescent moods and behaviors may change, your relationship with your teenager will be evolving as well. They may want to spend less time with family. They may show less affection to parents. They may not want to seem attached or dependent on their parents. They may become very private, which means that they would talk to you less. They would share less of what's going on in their life. And they may even become resistant to things that you request. Building relationship with your teen is very important. It is vital because it is at the core of how parents can best support their teen.
It's all about relationship building. Rules minus a relationship equals rebellion. Rules plus a relationship equals respect. Invest time in what they want to invest time into. That's how you make connections with young people. Meet them where they're at. So let your child take the lead in their interests. Explore activities you can do together, new ones or same activities. Some possible suggestions could include going out for a walk or hike, cooking together, watching their sports or activities they're involved in, or enjoy a family game night. There is value in continuing to do the same activities together as it will help build and strengthen the brain connections and relationships. Next, we will provide some basic tips for parenting your teen. We recognize that parents all have their own way of parenting. And we also recognize that all teenagers are different and may require specific parenting styles. Here, we would like to provide some general tips you could find helpful. Praise their efforts and strengths. Use descriptive phrase such as, I really notice how much effort you put into your soccer game versus good job today. Listen to their ideas and ask for help and input. How can we make things better? Encourage involvement and problem solving. Allow the teenager to solve their problems independently. Then you and your teen can brainstorm solutions together. Monitor them, where they are, who they are with, and what they are doing. Pick your battles. An extra room might not be a big issue. Role modeling. Children and youth may or may not do what they are told, but will often do as they see. It is important to be mindful of what you are doing as a parent in front of your children, as they will often mimic those behaviors, whether it be positive or negative behaviors. Reflecting and reaching out. Recognizing what is effective and ineffective and when you may need support. If you're overwhelmed or need support, please reach out to others, such as friends and family or community resources. Next, we will provide some tips on how to effectively communicate with your teenager. Communicating with your teen can be challenging at times. It may feel like what you're saying is going in one ear and out the other. So hopefully you find these tips helpful. Listen more, talk less, pay attention to their body language and what they're not saying. Limit your requests, feedback or points. Teen may not take in all of the points you're saying. Acknowledge feelings. That must be upsetting. Use I instead of you messaging. I need help versus you need to help. Ask open-ended questions. In general, when you are communicating with your teen, ensure you have their attention. Be mindful of the timing and place you are communicating with your teen and role modeling a respectful conversation. It's important to be aware and be in the loop of things, especially in a world where social media can easily impact their lives. So, this brings us to talk a little bit about social media use. It is just as important to be involved in your teenager's life online as it is to be involved offline. Parents play an important role in helping their youth navigate social media and the online world. When considering your teenager's social media use, reflect on your own. Are you modeling appropriate use for them? If not, it may be time to consider a family goal around social media use. Because just as there are many benefits to social media and the online world, there are also risks, especially for teenagers, as it can cause a reduction in physical activity or sleep and lead to mental health concerns down the road. This may happen when your teen comes across stressful situations online, such as hurtful comments, distressing content, comparing themselves to others, self-image concerns, and a fear of missing out. As parents, you can support your teen on how to manage these types of experiences. One way to do this is through setting boundaries, which becomes increasingly important as your teenager becomes older. Maintaining a positive child relationship is important to provide the space for your teen to be open and discuss any worries they may have about technology, which could include cyberbullying, unwanted messages, inappropriate images, and worries about missing out. If your teen is able to discuss their concerns with you, it's also an opportunity to offer them support and to help your teen maintain the boundaries around social media use. 
Be involved and educate yourself. Have ongoing conversations with your teens about the pros and cons about social media. And don't hesitate to set limits and clear rules and expectations around this important part of their life. As mentioned previously, overuse can impact physical activity, sleep levels, and overall well-being of your teen. Try to promote offline activities such as taking time to spend together, encouraging your teen to take breaks from the screen, and incorporate regular physical activity daily. Support your teen to enhance their social and emotional development by promoting offline relationships with family and friends. Face-to-face -face relationships are vital for the development of social and communication life skills. Find screen-free time as a family, such as a meal without devices. This allows the family to be present and to enhance family connectedness. The internet and other technology allows teens to quickly connect and communicate with friends, to search topics they would otherwise be too embarrassed to discuss with others, and to experiment with intimacy. While these are all healthy adolescent behaviors, technology does present some risk to teens. It's important to be aware of who your teen is interacting with online and to have regular conversations with them about online relationships. Adults with harmful intentions can use the internet to misrepresent themselves in an attempt to establish a personal relationship with teenagers to get personal information or to meet up with a youth in person. Teens are vulnerable because of their online behavior is less inhibited at the same time, they are not developmentally ready to handle some of the complex situations that can arise online. Conversations that may initially appear harmless can change, and internet luring and human trafficking are serious issues that may result. Parents need to have these important conversations about online relationships. Teens may tend to keep experiences and relationships private from their parents. For some tips on how to start these conversations, and to encourage open communication about these issues, please see the research page that accompanies this presentation. So now let's talk about what contributes to promoting successful transitioning in high school. There are many things that can contribute to your teenager's success in transition to high school, and those things include protective factors. What are protective factors? They're positive influences that promote their self-confidence and build skills, which in turn prevents high-risk behaviors. When teens are involved in extracurricular activities, they meet new people, build skills and confidence, develop relationships, with, which creates a sense of belonging. This overall promotes health and well-being. Therefore, they're better prepared to learn and be successful in school. Now, let's dive into some tips to share with your teen. Starting high school can be scary for many teenagers, and not everyone adapts easily to this change. During the COVID-19 pandemic, young people have missed out on a lot of opportunities to practice their relationship skills, which could make it even harder making the jump to secondary school. These tips could help ease the transition with your child. Encourage them to be open to meeting new people. High school can be a chance to meet others who share interests and can be a fresh start for teens. Suggest that getting involved with school activities can be a great way to make new friends. Stress that attending every class is important. If your teen misses a day in high school, they may miss a lot. They can stay organized by keeping up with homework and studying, which will avoid the stress and anxiety of getting behind. Encourage your child to ask for help when they need it. Teachers, student success staff, and guidance counselors are there to help. Teenagers need more sleep than adults. So we're encouraging them to get nine hours of sleep, to exercise regularly, and to eat a nourishing breakfast will start their school day off on the right foot. Just as your teens need some tips and guidance to ease into high school, there are similar strategies for parents to help their teen to succeed. Getting involved with the school through parents' nights, parent council, Teacher parent interviews or getting to know school guidance staff will ensure that you are aware of what's going on at school. Talk to your teen about what is going on at school with their classes, friends, and school activities. 
Take advantage of family mealtimes and time driving in the car to make conversations natural and more comfortable for both of you. Know what help is available and encourage your teen to take advantage of those opportunities. Continue to have clear expectations for behavior at home and at school will reinforce boundaries and expectations in your family. Supporting them to maintain a balance between family, friends, school, activities, and part-time work can help to avoid them becoming stressed and overwhelmed. Your teen still needs your care and support for their physical needs like sleep, nutrition, and exercise. Planning family meals, practicing regular bedtimes, and modeling physical activity will show your teen that these things are important for lifelong well-being. Teens entering high school are testing their own limits by trying new things and becoming more of an individual in your family. These are natural developments that parents must adapt to and support. Teens thrive when parents stay involved, and here are some tips that teens want their parents to know. Never give up on me. Give me a voice and take me seriously. Feed my interests. Challenge me to succeed. Comfort me when I fail. Let me play. Tell me what is good about me. Set fair boundaries. Help me to hope and dream. Standing beside your teen as they explore their capability in high school will let them know that you are there for them no matter what. It is important to prepare teenagers who are more likely to struggle with the transition to high school. Those more likely to have difficulty are teens with identified learning needs, like sensory differences, autism spectrum disorder, or other developmental challenges, mental health or behavior concerns like anxiety or depression, family support concerns such as a recent family loss or a change in parent employment situation, a disruptive living situation such as a custody sharing arrangement, prior experience of being bullied, Parents or guardians can make school staff aware of these issues and support systems can be created in advance. Having a plan in place before the transition starts and having regular check-ins and communication can support these vulnerable teens. All teens are different in how they can adapt and transition to high school. For some, it may not even phase them, and for others, it may be challenging and take some time. So, having support at home and some tools under their belt your teenager can develop resiliency. So what is resiliency? It's the ability to cope in the face of adversity. All children and youth must be taught the skills that will help them achieve and maintain positive mental health so that in the face of future challenges, they process the resiliency to thrive. So let's talk about how to help your teen build that resiliency. Navigating the tricky teen years can be tough. It's a period of significant changes physically, mentally, and experientially. Every week brings fresh opportunities and challenges which can present new problems to overcome. Helping your teen to develop resilience can equip them with the tools to reduce the impact the negative situations have. For your teen to be resilient, they will need to be comfortable with their feelings and be able to express them appropriately, help them to understand that they are in control of their emotions and their thoughts. We all have impulses to do and say things when we are angry, annoyed, or frustrated, but sometimes this can result in unpleasant outcomes. Teen brains have not always developed the ability to control their strong emotions. It is important to help your teen to stop and think about their feelings before reacting in an inappropriate manner. For example, you can suggest a count to 10 to censor themselves before speaking out or overreacting to a situation. In a world where the landscape is continually shifting, flexible thinking will go a long way. If plans did not work out, pivoting to another plan or a backup plan can help relieve the pressure on what comes next. An optimistic outlook. As a parent, you can help your teen to be optimistic by encouraging them to embrace challenges as means of learning. Support them to practice positive self-talk by saying, I can't do it yet. 
This will increase the self-confidence to cope with what comes their way and allows them to believe that they can achieve things. You can encourage your teen to ask for support when they need it and acknowledge and validate them when they do so. Assure your teen that seeking help is a sign of strength. Keep an open dialogue for your teen so it's easier for them to bring things up. Remind your teen of positive experiences when they or their friends got help in the past. So now that we've talked about how you can support your teen with resiliency, we will now move on to identifying possible areas of concern. Here are a few things to look out for, which may suggest your teen is having difficulty coping with the transition to high school. Struggles to make friends. Frequent problems with school staff or peers. Sudden changes in mood, eating patterns, or friends they hang out with. Social isolation or the feeling they do not belong. Difficulties coping with daily routines or use of unhealthy coping strategies. Skipping school and frequent absences from school. Challenging, disruptive, or self-harm behavior, such as cutting or disordered eating. Declining grades or a dis disinterest in school. Sleep problems, maybe either too much or an inability to sleep. If you're seeing some of these warning signs or red flags in your teen, they will need your support. You can do this by keeping communication open and offering to talk with your teen about what might be causing their distress. Encourage and assist your teen to seek help by talking with someone they trust. Explore the Be Safe app with your teen. You can make a customized mental health safety plan with the app that can be accessed when they are unable to cope. Connect with a healthcare provider like your family doctor or nurse practitioner. Referral for counseling could be extremely helpful. If your teen talks to you about thoughts of suicide, seek crisis support by contacting Reach Out in your area. We have already mentioned many of the staff in high schools who can be an access to support your teen. These staff could include guidance counselor, principal or vice principal, social worker, a chaplain, a classroom teacher. Last but not least, your teen can come to see the public health nurse at the school. There is public health nurse assigned to all high schools who can help teens and parents connect with further information and supports. Your school administration can provide you with the school nurse's contact information. In addition to those in-school supports, there are community services that can help families and high school students. Some have been mentioned on previous slides, but they include kids help phone, telephone, text, or website access to live support and online resources, your family physician or practitioner, community support workers such as youth outreach workers, ways staff in London and Middlesex, counseling services through Family Services of Thames Valley, welcome child and youth mental health support from Oxford and Ellingham counties, reach out, a universal access point for crisis, mental health and addiction services in our region, Connects Ontario, an online or telephone service that can direct users to other services in the community, and the Canadian Mental Health Association, which has offices in Middlesex, Oxford, and Elgin counties. Some helpful websites are listed on this slide for parents and teens to browse in order to learn more information about teen mental health and supports for life transitions. These websites are also included on the parent resource page that accompanies this presentation. We have covered a lot of topics this presentation. We would like to summarize the main topics that have been discussed. Teenage brains operate differently, but you can use this to your advantage. Building relationship with your teen is vital. Encourage their independence in reasonable risk taking while setting clear boundaries and expectations. So be open. Media safety is real world safety. Have a social media plan to keep your teenagers safe and engaged. Transition periods are hard, but manageable. Some students may need more help than others. Resilient teenagers become resilient adults. Building coping and stress management skills will help your teenager handle life's challenges. Know the red flags. Your teenager still needs you, but they may not tell you. So it's important for you to know where the supports are.
we would like to leave you by stressing the importance of caring for yourself. Raising teenagers can be challenging, especially during a pandemic. Encourage your teen to develop relationships with other caring, positive adults. And that can reap several benefits to both your teen and provide you with some time for self-care. We encourage you to reconnect with other adults in your life and get the support you and your family need. You are not alone. To be able to care for the people we love, we must first take care of ourselves. Here are some simple strategies for taking care of yourself as your teen transitions to high school. Enjoy a relaxing activity or hobby. Get enough sleep, exercise, and eat well. It's not just your teens that need to do this. Spend some time with your friends or family. And if need be, find and join a parenting support group. Just because you have teenagers doesn't mean you are done parenting. The School of Nurses of Southwest Public Health and Middlesex Women Health Unit would be happy to answer any questions you may have about parenting your teen through the transition to high school. Please feel free to contact us. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And these links are available on the resource page that accompanies this presentation. Thank you for participating in this webinar with us. Please make sure that you check out the rest of the webinars in the Family Wellbeing series. Again, we have put together a resource page for you with the web links and the organizations that we discussed in this presentation to help you and your teenager as you transition into high school. We wish you and your teenager all the best with the transition to high school. Good luck, bye. bye.